verse 1. This is the NIV I have with me today. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not everyone has faith. But the Lord is faithful and He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. Verse 6. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers, to keep away from every brother who is idle and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to make ourselves a model for you to follow. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule, quote, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle. They are not busy. They are busybodies. Such people have command, we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. And as for you, brothers, never tire of doing what is right. If anyone does not obey our instruction in this letter, take special note of him. Do not associate with him in order that he may feel ashamed. Yet do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand which is the distinguishing mark of all my letters. This is how I write. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So he finishes his letter there. Letters to the church in Thessalonica. I do want to look at that back in, I think it's chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians. Um, it's just on my mind. I want to look at it for a minute. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, just to give you an idea of what these believers were made of, how they, what they were made of, so to speak. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that He has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, and with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering. You welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of rejection, reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. So from the beginning of the letters to the end of the letters. A model. He's saying they were model believers. He's saying of them, 
I, I certainly would think model in terms of their conversion, how they had turned away from the old life and turned completely to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thinking a model in terms of how they had endured great suffering for the gospel. There had been persecution and the believers there had endured a lot of pressure because they were following the Lord Jesus. And uh, according to uh, um, they also were a model because their faith was known by others. The apostles said everywhere their faith was known. And so they, were, they had a reputation of being sincere followers of Jesus Christ and standing strong in their faith. That's the kind of people that were in Thessalonica. By the time we get to this last chapter in his two letters, He's winding it all up and talking about how they are to live now that they believe that the Lord Jesus is going to return. We've been going through the book of Revelation and we've gotten, you know, almost through all of John's writings over the last two years. And uh, in Revelation, we're going to uh, finally get to Armageddon and Finally, we're going to get to the coming of the Lord and we're going to get to the kingdom when it comes and, and uh, these kind of uh, things that we know are true. We don't have hammered down in exact details, but we know are true and we know that the Lord Christ is going to come again. He's not finished yet. We know He's coming. So the question then comes to us, how are we going to live if we know and believe Jesus is coming again? We have some models in front of us. The believers there in Thessalonica. And then the apostle says that they were models to them as well. So the apostles, and in this case, Paul, of course, Silas, and Timothy were mentioned in the letter. Having been the ones who had written the letter and delivered the message to them. Well, how were, how were they to live? Well, in the first section, they're to live prayerfully. <coughs> prayerfully. Well, you know, the Lord said, and, and we mentioned this a lot, to pray to the Lord of the harvest that He will send forth laborers into His harvest field because the harvest is white and it's ready for harvesting. But the laborers are few. One of the great prayer requests the Lord Jesus Himself gave. Here the Apostle says it this way. Pray for us that the message of the Lord will spread rapidly. Rapidly. That it will move. So we wonder what are we supposed to pray about. In light of the Lord's coming we're to be prayerful. Related to the spread of the Gospel. In our community. And around in our country. And around the world. What about God's servants? He said that in verse 2, Pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not everyone has faith. Paul's uh, struggling, obviously. And remember the believers in Thessalonica were a persecuted people. They were very much persecuted. And they, when they had come to Christ, it was under a lot of pressure when they came to Christ in the first place. This kind of thing is not changed. It's uh, may, maybe an increase in the world today in different places. It's worse than others, of course. We can tell about some of the stories that we know. We know about Mr. Brunson that's in the news to, uh, recently up in Turkey, the pastor who's been held there. He's faithful servant of the Lord. He's been there for 20 years laboring and uh, he's being held under what appear to be false charges. Pray for Andrew Brunson. Servant that needs to be delivered. So pray that God will strengthen and protect His people. In verse 3 he says, the Lord is faithful and He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. This promise sounds like right out of the Lord's Prayer. 
Deliver us from the evil one. Right straight from the Lord's Prayer. We can pick it up off the page for ourselves. It's not only for the Thessalonians. But God is faithful. We can believe He's faithful not only to them, but He's faithful to us. He's not only faithful to me, He's faithful to you. Look at that person next to you and say, the Lord is faithful to you. <laughs> he promised that. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. What happens is we get in our mind, and of course Satan wants us to be fearful all the time. That's one of the tactics, the strategies of the enemy to make us fearful. But God's Word says, He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. That's the good news. How are we supposed to live? We believe Jesus is coming. What's He going to do with us until He comes again? He's going to strengthen and protect us until He's finished with us. And then we'll go to be with Him. Or He'll come and take us. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. He promised it. Verse 4, He said that we have confidence in the Lord that you are doing all and will continue to do the things we command. Wow. This is not just some kind of simple statement. This is a powerful statement. Of course, the commands were related to God's truth and God's Word that they had been teaching and preaching to them faithfully. Paul and Timothy and Silas. We command you these things. And in the next section here, you're going to see specifically what the commands are related to. They've been obedient. They, Paul was... In, um, uh, acknowledging their obedience to the Word. That God will grow us and God will enable us. In verse uh, 5, May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and perseverance. Verse 4, We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command and God will enable them to endure. Now, these are suffering believers, so they needed that Word. God's, going, God's with you. He's faithful. He's going to enable you to endure the hardship. So you think about your life. You, you may have some hard things going on in your life right now. The truth is God is faithful and He will enable you to endure. Persevere. May His grace and strength be yours in the name of Jesus. I found in my uh, footnotes in uh, Life Application Bible, there's a little section on guidelines to help you survive Satan's attacks. How to handle things. Wow. This last week, my family was under attack. Very interesting. My wife had enough um, spiritual sense to realize it was spiritual warfare related to her mother. And uh, that all happened last Sunday, actually. Well, it's been going on, you know, in the family, but it came to kind of a head for us. So please pray for her. She's there uh, trying to assist their, her family right now. Well, one one thing that, that happened, and, and many of you know there's a... Uh, Edom beliefs, some cultic beliefs that my mother-in-law holds. And uh, so I say this because we need your prayers. And uh, I, I think it would be good, good for me to share it with you. Um, Je Jehovah Witness beliefs. Okay, One of the beliefs of that cult, that Edom, is that you do not take the a member a member of the uh, of the cult does not take blood when in the hospital. It's a very serious belief too that they hold, and I mean they hold it so strongly that they would rather die than take the blood. Some, you know, spiritual irony. That thing 
you you uh, fight against the most is the thing that comes and happens. So that's exactly what happened last Sunday. For some unknown reason, my mother-in-law's blood, which should be at 12 count, went down to 4. She was nearly out of blood. And so we, we rushed her on Sunday afternoon. I, uh, we were at my aunt and uncle's house eating after we finished lunch. Thankfully, we finished lunch. <laughs> and then I got the call to come down and check on her at the house. And when we did, uh, she was in just really bad condition. Sharon and I had to basically carry her down the stairs. And then we got to the emergency room. We found out in the emergency room that the doctor came in and told her, Mrs. Ogletree, if you do not take blood, you will die. No, not going to take blood. So she knew that was the first doctor. Then they said, well, we'll send you to the other hospital in a nearby town. It was about an hour and a half by ambulance to the nearby town. So off to the nearby town, the doctor came in. Mrs. Ogletree, if you do not take blood, you will die. So there were three doctors told her this. And uh, so, I mean, basically that was... Uh, and still, still today, we don't know why the blood went down. They're not sure yet. So, it got so low that her heart almost gave out. It was pumping. Her chest was like this, you know. Because it's trying to find blood to pump. And she was hurting so badly they gave her morphine. And the morphine would not relieve the pain. Now, those of you that have had morphine, you know, morphine relieves the pain, all pain, but in this case it did not. And so she became alarmed that she was going to die finally. And after a, a discussion with my wife, and she finally, and with the nurse, finally decided to take the first pint of blood. So she took that and then later.